Hello, I'm Matthew Armstrong. Let's draw Fred the Dragon. Stay tuned till the end for a very special reading of the single panel comic by the author, who is me. And now my full process in creating this watercolor. Pencil to pen to watercolor. I already said watercolor. Let there be light from the light table. It's more of a light pad, really. Starting with the face, the eyes, just kind of loosely moving around, letting the line be really expressive, not holding the pen tight at all. This started life in my sketchbook, and I scanned it into my computer and then blew it up and printed it out on 11 by 8.5 paper. Normally I'd do a pass where I use a pencil and just kind of edit as I go along and make the drawing really understand what I'm going to do with the drawing. But today I'm living dangerously. Straight to ink. Good luck me. An old cartoonist trick is the shade in things pushes them into the background. See? Time to finish up old Fred here. We'll get in there and add his tummy ridges. Ruffles has ridges. I'm shading in the little bits in the back. The first word balloon has been drawn. An old cartoonist trick for drawing jewels is to fill in the top part really dark and leave a little highlight. It works every time. Ooh, it's time to draw the little mage with little glowing eyes. I love mages with little glowing eyes. And what is a mage without his magic book? Again, starting with the eyes, moving to the contour lines. Got a really crazy, weird looking book. Little pup, also in mage robes. You know how some dogs kind of have those cute droopy eyes? Even though those are just dots for eyes, I wanted to give them that droopy eye look, so I kind of slanted the eyes just a bit. I think it works. I am one with the pen, and the pen is with me. I'm really in the flow and it's just a really great, it's just a really great feeling to be in. Everything's just kind of working. Some part of me knows, knows how to draw and where to go. I don't usually feel like that. Mr. Fox was a foxy fellow. Let's shade his ears in. Yeah, that looks good. He's wearing mage robes too. I guess they're all mages. Except, where are Fred's robes? Mage robes are usually pretty ornate with magic runes and symbols all over them. But instead of doing that detail, I'm just suggesting that with scribbles. Let's get those lucky fox feet in there. A little more robe action. Shade in the shadows on those fox feet. Mr. Fox's tail. Now he's looking like a fox. Ladies and gentlemen, the first and second word balloons. Start laying in the ground. I try to think of like discs, you know, cylindrical plates, but at a perspective angle, so gives it a lot more environment than you know it really has there. But they sort of look like discs in perspective. They just kind of have shoots of grass and little rocks sticking up. It's time for lettering. I don't really have the best handwriting, but I learned to embrace that a long time ago. I mean, you know, it's it's what I got. And finally, the signature. I do the signature last, but I don't really know why. That little cartoon? I think I like it. The time has come for watercolor. Sometimes I start by asking myself, what, what color do I see in this painting? And then I ask myself, what mood do I want to convey in this painting? And the answer here is definitely yellow. This is a bright and sunny mood. This is, you know, trying to be a joke, even if it's my sense of humor, which is questionable at best, but yellow and a few different kinds of yellow at the same time, and I'm letting them bleed into each other. I think it looks really good. 
So if it's a bright yellow sunny day, it stands to reason that some of that sunlight would just bleed in between the legs and all over the ground. You can see that I'm lifting some of the watercolor out of areas I don't want to get too dark. I want the yellow sunlight to mix with the warm green of the grass. I'm being a little loose with it. I'll go in loose first and then I'll define it later. But first we gotta let the watercolor kind of do what watercolor does. Which is definitely some sort of magic. So while it's still wet, I'm adding in yellow ochre, a little bit of blue from the sky above into the shadows. I'm going in there and grabbing the details. And then I'm just letting it all watercolor together. I just switched to a round number seven brush so I can more easily put in the little details. We're gonna start with warm shadows, sort of with burnt umber. I'm gonna go with warm shadows because it's a cool sky. A cool sky at the golden hour of sunset. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. I'm adding blues now. Blues to the rock to kind of make them look like gray granite rocks or something. Blue-green to start defining the grass. Little bits of moss on top of the rocks. Now that the warm shadows have dried, I'm gonna go in there with the local color. First Fred gets his green. It's a warm green to define itself against the cool green of the grass. Just adding layer on layer. Switching to yellow for his tummy. More of a canary yellow than the yellow in the background. Blue-green wings. I'm just adding a little wash on top of wash. Ah, blue magic jewel. Time to mix up some red and add it to Mr. Fox. His local color will be red. Add a little bit of water first and then add the red into it till I get about the right saturation. It dries pretty fast and then I can go over it with a little bit of a darker Limsrum Crimson Red and start suggesting shadows in the robes and the hood. I wanted the little book fella to be sort of a black magic book, but now I'm kind of wishing I would have made him a different color. That tummy needs more yellow. Mixing a little red with a little brown, put it into the staff. Put little brown accents onto the dog's robe. The dog's robe needs to be more blue, so a second wash of blue is necessary. Imagine a lot of blue ambient light coming from the sky, and so I use it for an excuse to add little dots and little dabs to add texture. The fox's robes will be blue as well, but a darker blue than the pups there. With the first wash applied, it's soon time to add the second wash. I'm going a little darker with that letting it bleed into the first wash. It blends really nicely. But then I go full ultramarine blue and create almost a, a dark silhouette of the magic robe underneath the scarf. Lastly, a little bit of Limsrum Crimson. It's a purpley red that mixes really well with blue. Using that same burnt umber and Limsrum Crimson, we go around and add little dark accents. Behold, the heat wan gun thing. The heat forges the watercolor into its final form. Watercolor. And here's where it really comes together. I'm boldly using these blues to make drop shadows add texture to the ground, that cast shadows of the characters. And all this blue really tie it together. Hmm. I decided that Mr. Fox is not quite red enough, so another wash of red for him. I have a memory of a red fox toy, and I just remember being so vibrantly orange and red in the fur. And I think uh, I want Mr. Fox to be like that. 
Yeah, that's better. But what about our glowy-eyed mage? He needs some alimzerm crimson. His robe should be well saturated and a bit darker than the characters in front of him. That dark red's gonna pop that pup right forward. And then some alimzerm crimson into the robes. As if the light's bouncing off the red mage's robe. Prismatic Array of Light. All that light just getting everywhere, I tell ya. Hey, it turned out pretty good. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Comic Panel Theater. Rawr, rawr, I'm a dragon. Rawr. <sighs> Put some clothes on, Ralph. I think it's funny. Thanks so much for watching. Let's do it again soon. Same Matt time, same Matt channel.